This is the seventh video on second order responses. The focus here is on steady state. We're looking at models of the form given here. You'll notice it's a second order differential equation written in standard form d2x dt squared plus 2 zeta omega n dx dt plus omega n squared x equals f. And in general, in this sequence of videos, we're looking at how the behavior of x depends upon the parameters, so in this case, zeta and omega n. This particular video is going to focus on steady state, and it's going to ask, how is the steady state affected by the parameters zeta and omega n? Now, the steady state for a step response depends only on the coefficient of x of t, and not on any other parameters. So you'll notice, although we started with a differential equation here, we've said the steady state only comes from these two terms here, which is these two terms. In other words, what have we said? At steady state, the derivative terms must be zero. Otherwise, you're not at steady state. So I can cross that term. I can cross that term. And what do I get left with? Omega n squared x equals f. Now, obviously, there's a caveat. We've got to assume convergence. There's no point trying to find the steady state of a divergent signal. It's a meaningless concept. But either ways, the bottom line is we can see the steady state will come solely from this expression here, omega n squared x equals f. What is steady state? Just to emphasize the point. So the steady state speed of a car depends only on the steady state accelerator position, not on any other of the dynamic characteristics. The steady position of a suspension system depends only on the car mass and how many passengers are in it. It doesn't depend upon the road or anything else because we're in steady state. And you can think of other examples which illustrate the point that many of the model parameters you may have don't actually affect the steady state position. Here's an alternative steady state analysis just to uh, make a link with the earlier videos in this series where we used a differential equation perhaps of this form. And what you'll notice is although the solution had two bits, it had bits with exponentials, ae to the pt, be to the qt, the steady state term comes only from this part of the equation, cx equals df. So the exponential bits assume to decay to zero and therefore have no impact on the steady state. And so the steady state depends only upon the parameters D and C, and obviously the magnitude of whatever step you've applied in F. Now, looking back at the previous video, which introduced the normalized form and introduced the impact of damping, if you look at these examples here, you'll see that we've made this coefficient the same throughout. Same throughout. And what we've done is we've changed the damping. And when we did this, we said we got very, very different responses. So here we go. You can see very different response characteristics. However, what did you notice? They all settle to the same position. They all have the same steady state because we haven't changed this coefficient here. So it's re-emphasizing the point the steady state only depends on the coefficient of the x term and obviously uh, whatever coefficient is multiplying the input and the magnitude of the input. Some questions then. Can you find the steady state positions for these differential equations? Now we've given a, a suggestion in the uh, balloon up there that you might want to try validating your answers in MATLAB. Um, just in order to partly say, I can use MATLAB, and partly give yourself confidence, say, yeah, I've done the response and it's settled where I expected it to. But I hope you can do these very, very easily. So to do the steady state, 10x equals 1, that tells you it settles at x equals 0.1. 4x equals 2, tells you it settles at x equals 0.5. 6x equals 0.4 tells you it settles at x equals 0.4 over 6. 5x equals 1.2 tells you it settles at x equals 1.2 over 5. 10x equals 3, it settles at x equals 3 over 10. So hopefully you've all got the message and it's very, very simple to calculate the steady state position. Obviously, again, assuming 
that the underlying signals are convergent. So in conclusion, we've illustrated the normal form of second order ODEs in terms of damping ratio and natural frequency and indicated that the steady state is independent of the damping because the damping occurs on the coefficient which affects dxdt and that coefficient has no impact on the steady state.